Ma'am, uh, would you call the roll, please? Sam Vincent. Don Colapetro. Here. Chairman Bird. Here. Bob Thinnis. Here. Rex Sims. Here. Meg Jacobson. Here. Carolyn Gallagher. Here. Okay, the first item is uh, Bonita Beach Road Vision Discussion. Audrey? Oh, and that's probably the, the, I'm the one who at least knows it least. So I'm going to have our. No, that's okay. Is it going to be Arlene or Matt today? She's, let's start with Arlene on Bonita Beach Road Vision and we'll go from there. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Um, we have before you um, Dr. Margaret Banyan with Florida Gulf Coast University. And to give you a little background on the project, as you may recall, um, a few years ago, um, we have been continually talking about the traffic concerns on Bonita Beach Road. And originally, there had been a proposal to look um, through the FDOT at alternatives for the quadrant of Bonita Beach Road and US 41 as far as traffic concerns. There was lots of discussion regarding that. So one of the alternatives in that study could have been to research um, an overpass. At that time, the council decided not to move forward with that and instead placed some funds, uh, approximately $100,000, to study the Bonita Beach Road corridor. Um, that happened in the fall of 2015, and Tool Design Group was a selected firm. Um, through that process, um, we held two weeks of public hearings here at City Hall, the last week of January and the last week of February to gather public input from the business community, the residents, um, the, the gated communities that are adjacent to Benita Beach Road, um, to get feedback from them on the process, um, the existing land uses, and basically the community's vision for Benita Beach Road, what we saw happening, how we felt it interrelated into our community. Um, we did do mailings out to um, the folks at the quadrants of the uh, and larger property owners along Benita Beach Road um, and held those workshops here. Back in May, uh, Ian Lockwood, who is the uh, engineer who presented the project to council in a draft form, and most recently we received um, the final report, um, which you should have a copy in your LPA packets today. City Council has um, directed staff to begin an implementation process of the Bonita Beach Road vision into the comprehensive plan. This, in effect, would give future developers um, information and opportunity to understand what the city's vision is for the roadway and to make sure that their interconnections, uh, driveways, um, uses are in fitting with the overall vision for the, for the corridor. Um, talks have begun with some of these vision opportunities with our partnering organ, um, jurisdictions, which is very important because Benita Beach Road is a county facility. It also on the south side um, going towards the beach is a Collier County facility. So we have been making sure that Collier County as well as Lee County has been informed of these hearings and they have received copies of the report as well. We will continue talks with them to make sure that the stages and the steps we take that they're comfortable with. At this time, I'd like to ask Matt Feeney, the Public Works Director, to come up and give you a brief synopsis of what the vision uh, projects and the importance of the traffic engineering side of it. Thanks, Arlene. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. My name is Matt Feeney. I'm the Public Works Director for the city. And uh, I was here to talk about kind of the brief, com briefly, the components of the Beach Road Visioning. It, uh, as Arlene explained, was presented by Ian Lockwood of Tool Design Group. And it, it really set forth to do a couple of things. Uh, one was to, to come up with a concept that made Bonita Beach Road uh, more available to uh, all the users of the streetway, uh, including uh, motorists, uh, pedestrians, and bicyclists. So it, it tried to take a street that's very auto-centric in design and uh, <coughs> contemplate a design that would allow for other users to uh, be able to utilize the space. In addition, it tried to, uh, or it identifies some opportunities that can help with the congestion points that we see along Bonita Beach Road primarily with the Benito Beach Road US 41 intersection, uh, but it also identified some other areas of opportunity. Uh, for example, US uh, Old 41 and Benito Beach Road 
where expanded grid network uh, would assist in our, in our congestion issues. So there are really two components that come out of this visioning. One is to expand the roadway network at major intersections, primarily US 41 and Old 41 along Bonita Beach Road. So expanded network simply means building new roads along the, the quadrants of those intersections to allow turning movements to choose an alternate route and not actually have to enter into the intersection and contribute to the uh, gridlock. To that end, uh, the city has been pursuing, you may have heard the quadrant study with McMahon and Associates, which has come out of this study, which is to identify road alignments on the Bonita Beach Road US 41 intersection that would be viable for construction in the future. The second major component, and it's really highlighted here in the slide, is a separated 10 foot wide uh, bicycle pathway uh, in conjunction with pedestrian sidewalk facilities. So the study looked at opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, to expand the use of the street to other users. The, the primary recommendation that came out of it to, to address that need was the construction of this bicycle pathway and then it's a 10 foot wide bicycle path with a really a seven foot wide sidewalk running from Eastern Bonita all the way to the beaches. So that would provide folks a conduit if they were to choose an alternate mode of transportation, i.e. walking or, or biking, uh, to get them all the way from where, where they live out to the beaches. So it's, it's pictured here. It gives you an idea. Really the concept shows, uh, as I mentioned, the, the 10 foot wide path. There's, there's a space here that kind of is a common public space where you might find benches or garbage cans uh, that, that creates a delineation between uh, the true pedestrian facility, which would be the seven foot wide sidewalk further to the south. Those are really the two, two concepts that, that come out of the visioning. Uh, the expanded okay. roadway network and the, the bicycle path. Okay. Anybody have any comments or suggestions? What, what are we going to, uh, what, what action are we going to take on this today? We're, we're going to have Dr. Banyan come up and give you a presentation. Oh, this is okay. just your introduction. All right. But I did want to you, um, also define the project scope just so you're fully aware. It is the western boundary of Hickory Boulevard, where Bonita Beach Road ends at Hickory Boulevard, all the way to uh, east to the end of County Maintenance Line. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody again. So uh, just briefly, I've got a few things to cover with you. I want to give you an idea about uh, where we would be going with the implementation of the vision into the comprehensive plan. So as you remember, the council asked us to work on implementing it. And this first slide here is just kind of describes what uh, our approach is that we would be working on primarily the first uh, element, which is the transportation element. Um, that would be, that really has most of the kind of meat in it where we would be looking at implementing the vision. But we also think that there's some other elements that are going to have to be addressed and those are the future land use element and then pot potentially some other elements, for example, the CIP, infrastructure element, et cetera. So that's kind of where we're looking to uh, make the changes. And again, primarily would be in the transportation element where we would focus our efforts. Uh, and then in addition to that, we also think that there's a need for uh, a, a map or several different maps. And those would be protecting and preserving right of way and developing a corridor protection kind of map. So again, we haven't, we haven't written the elements. That's just kind of what we expect we'll be working on. And then we'll also be preparing for you just a brief final report of the process as with all of the work that we're doing with you uh, Sorry. Sorry. Excuse okay. me. for the comprehensive plan. We just want to prepare just a brief report that'll kind of describe the process and the public meetings and that sort of thing. So the next slide really that we have is the timeline that we anticipate. So right now we've already 
taken the first two steps um, and the on November 2nd Arlene uh, updated council on sort of the process and that it would this would be going to you LPA uh, LPA meeting November 10th our November 10th is reflected here that's today and then we would be have we'll start to work on on the elements we want to have a public meeting uh, January 10th so as with all of the work that we're doing through the comp plan amendments it's important that we have meetings during season so that would be the meeting that we would uh, present to the public any comp plan amendments that we may have related to the vision implementation following that we would come to you the LPA for a transmittal hearing that would be on November 19th I'm sorry January 19th uh, and then we would bring it back to council on February 1st so the meetings following that you see on your schedule there's an asterisk there and that is because it is going to be up to council whether they want a second transmittal hearing and so we've left it open uh, if we don't need a second transmittal hearing we would not do it we would send it uh, up to the state uh, and then uh, our timeline would just be shifted ahead a couple weeks we would anticipate giving the timeline if they do want a second transmittal hearing we would have the adoption uh, May is that May May 3rd uh, 2017 and if not it would be pushed ahead just by a couple weeks so that's kind of the timeline we're working with um, we think it's important uh, as I think a lot of other discussions have happened that some of these things get in place so that everybody knows what they're working with for Benita Beach Road and that's it for me any questions or feedback that you have about the process or oh, yeah. what we anticipate doing Carolyn uh, yes I, I just like to to ask um, about what do you think that um, Lee County or do you think that Lee County are, is going to have any objections or any any problems since we're kind of changing the whole nature of the roads um, and do you on the other hand do you expect any help from them at all so that's probably not something that I should address um, <laughs> and because I haven't been involved in the conversations with Lee County directly I, I, I know because I'm going back to when they were envisioning the overpass and that's sort of what we thought they wanted right. so, well, I don't think and they ever wanted an overpass. They wanted federal dollars, and the federal dollars could not preclude uh, that as a consideration. But let me okay. tell you what we have, and then Arlene will give a little more detail. So, but you do understand my question. I though. understand your what question. Do you think that they're going to? And um, we have an existing interlocal agreement um, with Lee County. At this point, uh, staff is trying to negotiate to make changes. The it was a traditional funding. Um, agreement dealing with road segments and it has certain segments in it um, to address certain things and it's a joint participation um, agreement where we try to work together and obviously that agreement either needs to be amended tweaked I think I gave Carl about seven different solutions that we can consider for it um, Lee County staff is working with city staff and I think Arlene can update if you want on that uh, I do want to point out what the state of the law is as to this this is a Lee County jurisdictional road so we can put anything we want in our comp plan but don't necessarily think that that means that Lee County using its plenary powers can't override it I mean they still have the ability to do so um, a good example is Midpoint Bridge uh, where Lee County had some big issues uh, with the city of Fort Myers with that uh, facility now that's the worst case scenario and that's why the lawyers you know have me talk just very little Arlene can tell you about the current status uh, so the City Council has uh, within their own power elected uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Peter O'Flynn to begin conversations with our County Commissioner uh, Larry Kiker um, and we're continuing talks um, at, at that level as well as uh, Commissioner Kiker brought to the attention of the County Commissioners to allow the Lee County DOT staff and planning staff to start conversations 
with the city staff to see about potential implementation. Additionally, we've done outreach with Collier County as well. Um, one of the focuses of this will also be looking at the land use features and driveway connections and, and other items that the city does have actual jurisdiction over. Um, Lee County will be a reviewing agency through the comprehensive plan amendment process and we hope to continue feedback with them as well. As far as your question about their participation, um, we know that Council Member O'Flynn, Deputy Mayor O'Flynn, will continue those conversations um, as elected official to elected official and will continue to work through a process as best we can to see what makes sense for both jurisdictions. Additionally, that same conversation will eventually happen with Collier County as well as um, the fact that several of the roads connect directly to Collier County roads and the south side is Collier County where Ar the proposed pathway is. Arlene, does the state have any, any uh, input into this? Um, we will be sending it to DOT as well, especially because of the intersection of US 41 and Bendy Beach Road. And we, uh, we realize Secretary Hathaway is moving on from his space, but he's also been very involved with the process. He attended the presentations by um, Ian Lockwood to the city and is, um, is very uh, is a supporter of the network uh, development as far as providing alternatives and we call release valves for these traffic items. So we are in keeping with the methodology of the state transportation office, but okay. they will be also a reviewing agency. So um, that will be helpful in the process as we move forward with so other jurisdictions. In, in terms of like of emergency getting from the beach to the interstate or so on, you don't think that um, Lee County per se is going to have any problems Mm -hmm. We'll have to work through those issues as they okay. as they state them, and we'll we'll definitely be receiving b feedback from the fire department, uh, the sheriff's office, and, and continue through the process. And we'll also have state information that we receive through DOT that there are other jurisdictions on both sides of the state that work through these issues. Because this is really a preliminary thing. We're, th we're, this is very preliminary, yeah. and this is a good opportunity for us to show the commitment of the vision through the comprehensive plan. It's also very helpful when working with developers so they understand the mission and especially if we're going to um, have the vision of the dedicated p separated but uh, uh, pedestrian pathway and bicycle pathways, they need to, those developers need to be on notice that that's the intent of their vision. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Rex. <coughs> One of, the issue, one of the issues that I see here is that it's, in addition to just Bonita Beach Road, it's a correlation of additional traffic areas around our community uh, to increase traffic flow. And uh, I noticed on the maps on page eight and nine, uh, uh, I think that whatever we do here needs to be um, uh, accurately uh, presented. Uh, and one of the things that I comes to my mind right off the bat is up here on Strike Lane. I noticed that Strike Lane is now hooked to Three Oaks and is part of this traffic overlay thing. And I'm, I'm, Audrey will uh, confirm that Strike Lane was the was a result of nine years of court. Uh, lawsuits and so forth to get it built and it is owned by a drainage taxing district and one of the they they have barricades up now to, to close off part of the streets so that their requirement was at the time I believe the part of the settlement was that it would not be connected to uh, tree oaks and so I I see the connection here and and also I remember as the uh, strike lane was built, it was not built to uh, county road codes because right. it was a, um, uh, a different class of road. I don't remember what they called it exactly, but it's essentially a privately owned, I don't say private, it's, it's owned by a, uh, a service water management taxing district. Is that correct? That is correct. It's, it's uh, jurisdictionally maintained by the uh, San Carlos State Water Control District. So uh, I find it difficult to include that in the thing. Then the other thing that strikes me down here, uh, we looked down south of Mediterra off of uh, 
off of uh, Livingston Road, and it shows a connection going clear over to Vanderbilt. Um, that um, that's Veterans Parkway, and uh, first off, it's in Carter County. And the second thing is that uh, there was uh, an attempt ten years ago, I suppose, to improve that over to Old 41, and there were some horrendous problems developed in. Uh, 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 preserve areas around Sterling Oaks and that area down in there that uh, precluded that from happening. So to include it as part of this vision, I think is a little bit beyond the scope um, uh, that we shouldn't include it to consider it as part of this vision because it's probably not gonna work. And I, I look over here, uh, same thing, on page nine, um, we have uh, a little orange dotted line going from from Carolina over to um, uh, 41. That involves a, a road that was contemplated being built from uh, the stoplight on on 41, there by the um, uh, gateway to the Kmart. Um, uh, and and to go behind the big water retention area and hook up to a royal that was a discussion a few years ago and it turned out for some reason that I don't know right offhand it was cost prohibitive and yet it shown here as part of the this overall plan and yet it's probably not going to be built likewise we had the same thing down here on Pennsylvania we're showing up potential new street going from Pennsylvania over to 41. And and that was examined a number of years ago when the county was building the uh, public boat launch and built a very expensive bridge there. And for some reason or other, couldn't be part of the Pennsylvania Avenue extension because of wetlands and so forth in there. So uh, it kind of bothers me that we're, we're using things uh, as part of this plan to make it all work that are really doubtful that they're going to happen. So one thing I'd like to clarify is the actual plan that you have, the document, was not adopted by City Council. What was adopted by City Council was implementation elements of that plan into the comprehensive plan. So all the points you're making now make perfect sense that we would be reviewed by the committee and we're going to, t so th this was a vision, an overall best case scenario pie in the sky, how do we make this work and provide us with some alternatives. And then we have to take the next step, which is look at what's in the ground already and what we can make actually connect. And that will be part of the process of what Margaret works through, where we'd be getting additional feedback. So what you have is the vision, the top layer, and then we need to drill down into the actual uh, precise what makes sense to actually have right. in the comprehensive plan. Well, we I should understand that exactly, but yet it's included, and, and but there's nothing in here that says uh, uh, a lot of these things shown uh, won't work. <laughs> I mean, it's included in the plan to sell the program, which is fine. You gotta, you gotta have all the pluses in there, but um, it, it bothers me that it's included as part of the benefit of the overall plan, and those things, and many of these things, are are never going to happen. And I think that that's kind of uh, gilding the lily a little. Well, it's kind of misrepresenting the possibilities. So well, I didn't want to use that word. <laughs> so I want to address also too that that when we're working on the comprehensive plan amendments, we're not gonna be working on specific, it's not gonna specifically say, um, connect strike lane to uh, Three Oaks, for example. So um, I think that those maps are gonna be more general in nature. So you're not gonna see the specific implementation of the vision that you have before you in the maps. Well, maybe, so, what, you, maybe what you could do, Margaret, is it is uh, incorporate Rex's comments because <laughs> yes. Rex knows these things right. and uh, so that the next time it, it comes up those things will right. be incorporated and I think that's, in there we appreciate that yeah, yeah. The, and, and I think that so so when we sort of look at kind of how we develop those maps we want to preserve the opportunities uh, and preserve existing existing right-of-way 
um, and make it possible for any future opportunities. But again, it's not going to be, it's the comprehensive plan amendment, so it's not going to be very specific as what you would see here. Um, but I do have notes on those that feedback, so I appreciate that right. so that we Bob? can pay attention are, to it. And are, are there, oh, I'm sorry. Are, are we perhaps maybe being too detailed? Um, sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot by having a plan in a comp plan, which means if we want to change it, we can't, unless we go back through amendment process. I, some of these networks I can't see any value in. However, my concern is if we put in too much detail, I'd rather be a little bit more ambiguous. I agree. So we're, we're not intending to, to be overly detailed. And, and so that's right now we're creating comp plan language that speaks to the importance of connections and interconnectivity and bicycle and pedestrian safety and those sorts of things. So uh, the extent to which we get into detail is really going to be driven by those things. How do we preserve well, existing right of way? Well, it's yes. uh, the important thing that I see to this plan, and, and, and I'm all in favor of, of the improvement traffic flow, uh, the, the, the problem is that as we restrict the flow on Benita Beach Road, there has to be alternate routes mm -hmm. for people to get right. to where they're going. Because one thing we've learned, that once you put in traffic circles, uh, the traffic decreases. There is no traffic on your road anymore in front of you. So where are those people going to go? They've got to have other routes to get to wherever they're going. So I think it's important that the alternate uh, connections, uh, I, I think we're missing a point where we're having less connections, say, between uh, connections to uh, Three Oaks and connections from 41 to Three Oaks and so forth, because uh, there's got to be a way to bleed that traffic through. Uh, and so it's important that that be a part of this overall plan, and, and yet I, I see it as something that is, uh, a lot of it involves Collier County, and they're not even at the table here today. So, uh, you know, we can't depend on what they may or may not do to help implement our problem with the traffic on our beach roads. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I think it's important that this be an, uh, be an overall picture uh, uh, that, but yet it has to be uh, something that is workable. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, John. <clears throat> um, I've got some questions, and I, I guess maybe it involves detail on this plan, but <clears throat> on page 6, about the middle of the page, it says uh, at the intersection of Tamiami, Imperial, and Old 41, a two-lane roundabout was tested. How did that happen? How do you test something without installing it? I'm not the consultant who developed the plan, but I will speak to this. Um, <clears throat> it was just modeled. It's modeled through a program called SIDRA. And so he took the volumes that he, he had measured for this uh, Bonita Beach Road and saw whether it would function with the volumes that were actually occurring on Benita Beach so Road So it today. was a computer. It was a model, yes, it was not a computer yeah, model. Test. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Um, my next one, uh, my next question is on, well, it's just a comment. I mean, they keep calling it raised crossings. I mean, those are speed bumps, aren't they? You know, the image that was shown there, it's a, it's a raised intersection so that okay. as you approach uh, where your stop bars would be, it's it's as if the it's like a railroad bed to you know it would be raised okay um and my the other one that that kind of bugs me as i read through this um is the comment on page 11 at the top where it says um uh, space for separated bike facilities landscaping and wider sidewalks would be obtained by using safer when i underline that word 10 foot lane widths we talking about Yugos and smart cars here? I mean, for myself, I have a, I have a motor home and there are semis that are in my same predicament. My coach is eight foot six wide plus the mirrors. We're gonna need guide pins and a groove in the center of those roads and those lanes to keep us safe. 
again, this, this study looked at how you could land a separated bike lane and how you could build expanded grid network in the future. It, it is not mutually exclusive to the size of the roadway in the, the lanes. What was contemplated there is, is one way that you could achieve those goals. Okay. I just um, based just around the hundred foot right away. Like right away. Ten, ten feet? That's yes, a little sir. close. Uh, so if you had a two hundred foot wide right away, you could do a lot of neat things. Exactly. But when you're working with one hundred and fifty feet and you've got to get all this stuff into it, mathematics rules, no matter what. And that's what that plan lays out. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Um, I think those were those are my main concerns. So, so what we're looking at here is just a a, a, a conceptual. Plan Absolutely. that you are just presenting to us as part of the process, not not uh, necessarily uh, uh, wanting anything uh, besides some general feedback like the people have given. Is that right? Uh, absolutely, and and really what it's what it's being used as, and I don't want to speak in the the world of planning here, but <laughs> it's being used as a guideline, and and the concepts that Dr. Banyan will be developing and putting forth are the ideas of expanded grid network grid network or roadway network and this concept of this separated bike and pedestrian facility the details that you're seeing in there those remain to be seen as you go through the design process cost feasibilities and vet these things out okay but if if these questions are not raised at this point this thing will go right on true that's right just as it is that's a, we we learned that on 041 that you have to raise proper questions at the proper time well somebody's that. noted those comments from different people so yeah I, ha I have one other going yeah, along go with what Rex said ab about there's maybe good intelligence that some of these <coughs> thoughts of for where the roads may be may not pan out in the future do you have in your mind alternatives or does the writer of this have alternatives I mean, I think it's great to peel traffic off earlier to keep them out of the intersection and so on. But in all cases, all four quadrants, do, do we envision any alternatives if we can't get our primary roads that we want? Yes. Good. Uh, it's the short answer. And, and really what's going on is you have this Bonita Beach Road visioning that identified the notion of expanded grid network primarily at two intersections. US 41 and Beach Road, Old 41 and Benita Beach Road. Concurrently, or subsequently, kind of a little bit of both, mm -hmm. you have McMahon and Associates, which is a separate consulting firm that's doing what you may hear of as the quadrant plan. And they are doing exactly what you've pointed out. They're vetting right-of-ways and alignments that may or may not work, that may or may not be too expensive. Some areas of the quadrants are obviously very cost feasible. Uh, some areas have <coughs> significant challenges, but maybe uh, maybe a value to identify for the future should conditions change uh, in terms of revenue or in terms of redevelopment. So yes, there are alternative alignments, but of course we are constrained by geography to some existing mm -hmm, built environment as well as geography in those areas. Okay, okay. yes. Just ahead, one Bob. comment. I see a lot of potential land use issues coming up that uh, I hope we tread mm -hmm. softly. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. So I, I see some issues that we're going to have to deal with. Okay, what, what else do we have to do here on this particular one? Do you want to go through the, the uh, papers? Again, or not the one who put it on the agenda, so Margaret? We really don't. We wanted to share with you the timeline and share with you the the what we're looking at in terms of amending which elements and receive your feedback which I think we've done and I don't I don't know that we need a recommendation or a vote at this okay. time unless Good. Arlene has in the future, we're also going to encourage you all if you're available to attend the public workshop right. that we'll have here at City Hall just like we invited you to the visioning workshops as well and then the draft um, um, or the draft language would be brought back to you, as we said, during that time, length, time, time frame. Good. But we'd want the public feedback as well during that workshop to be included. All right, thank you. If it, nobody has any more comments, we'll, we can move on to the next thing, Audrey. And thank you very much uh, for coming. That's the next one to you. Right, the next one is Dr. Banyan will be bringing up the optional <laughs> air-based amendment <laughs> meeting. 
And uh, Dr. Barry, would you be more comfortable to sit here? Oh, no, I'm, I'm okay, thank okay. you. I um, just had to go back and get the rest of my materials. So uh, the presentation's coming up. And so the first part of this presentation we had planned would be something I would cover and Shelly Johnson, who you remember, is on our team. She's sick today, so I'm going to be covering her slides. And I apologize in advance if I don't do a fantastic job, because Shelly really is Shelly really is um, great. And and so um, I apologize in advance. But what we want to share with you, so switching gears, and the reason again why we did this is kind of two separate presentations is because we've got. Uh, three projects going on with the comprehensive plan so we're trying the best we can to separate them so that it's clear what we're working on and and when and and why so <clears throat> um, the what we're on now is the optional ear based amendments and when we presented to you last regarding the EAR the LPA asked that we spend some time to talk with you about the optional amendments. So when we uh, prepared the EAR, we talked again, we had some state mandated amendments that we are working on. We had annexation related amendments and we had these optional amendments. So this portion really is the optional part. Okay. And this is our first of four meetings with you. Um, <clears throat> I do have a schedule that I want to share with you, just a draft schedule and we can do that we can do that now and this is kind of how we're thinking that we would move through there's a copy for you too this is how we're thinking that we would spend the next four or five months with you and ev the different projects they're working on are color coded so it was a way for us to say okay this is what your agendas are going to look like and this is just a draft at this point so uh, <clears throat> in September, we did talk to you about the state mandated amendments. So that was the first thing on this schedule. Um, we're now in November. We are to talk to you about the Bonita Beach Road Vision discussion and then the optional air uh, amendments. Um, in January, we would come back with Bonita Beach Road transmittal, um, and we would also have a second meeting with you about the optional amendments. Um, February, we would uh, anticipate transmitting the state mandated amendments and also having a third meeting with you about the optional amendments and then finally in March we would have our final meeting about the optional amendments so Excuse that's kind of how are we these meetings does that mean there's two meetings that month or it's handled in the context of a meeting it's handled in the context of okay. a meeting so this these are the dates that we anticipate having the LPA meetings Okay. So I'll go into sort of why the January meeting is on the 19th. That's not your regular meeting date. I'll go into that in a second. Um, so we can sort of set that aside for a minute and then kind of move on and come back to it if we need to. Uh, <clears throat> so again, Alexis Crespo is here with me today and she is with Waldrop Engineering. And also Chris Perrigan, who you may have met before. He's the graduate student we have at FGCU who's working with me. And I don't know if you've met Chris yet. Chris, raise your hand. All right. So Chris has been learning a lot and, and been a real help to us. So where we're at. So I already kind of covered that we've completed the EAR, and that was submitted in March of 2016. It went through council, and the state acknowledged that they received the EAR. Uh, in that time, the EAR determined that there were optional amendments that could be produced that would further the vision of the city. Uh, again, those are not, as we've talked to you about in the past, they are not required by the state. And there is no timeline by which you have to have them done. You don't have to have them done at all. So right now where we're at is in June of this year, the council asked us to just simply scope out what those amendments might be. So I want to reemphasize and I'll emphasize that again, is we are not at the point here where we would be doing any amendments to the comprehensive plan. What we're doing now is simply scoping out if there are optional amendments that you want prepared, what would those be? Uh, because 
really from our standpoint, FGCU, if we don't know, we're, we're not going to prepare a scope and a budget for you or for council uh, without having the discussion about what should be in that scope. So it's kind of smart to spend some time to talk about it. And I also think it kind of relieves some of the public anxiety about what we would potentially do. Um, so I know this is kind of a little slide. I'll kind of talk it through. What we did here is that we had a meeting with council in October and we talked with council about what their priorities would be. And we um, wanted some direction about what to include and what to not include. Uh, and again, by not including certain things in the optional amendments, I think it helps the public to say there's certain things that you already talked about that you don't want addressed and that's okay with us. Uh, are there other things that, that we should be thinking of or are not thinking of? Uh, and again, so LPA meetings, we are spending this time with you, and then we would take a break in December. Uh, we would spend January, February, or March with you to talk through, again, that scope. In January, we would have a public meeting about the scope to get the public's feedback on any direction or priorities. Um, and then uh, in the council meeting, we would then present to them a scope of work and a potential budget uh, that they could possibly approve in April. Um, and then if there were amendments that they agreed to make or that you recommended, we would work on those June to the following September. So that's kind of the big picture timeline that, that we're working through. I've got one more kind of process slide and then I wanted to just seek your feedback on sort of what I just said. Um, when we met with council in October, we had a good discussion about what their priorities were. And they really had three big priorities. And those were, no real surprise, transportation, land use, and housing. And part of the reason why there's three big priorities is because those are very tightly interwoven. And I'll talk about that in some of the slides later. <coughs> They're so connected that it's very difficult to say, yes, we can work on transportation and not work on future land use. And so they're so tied together, we really sort of wanted to take those as uh, together. Um, and also, council gave us feedback to not address the things that the public and the LPA sort of clearly said you didn't want addressed. And for example, that was the height that we had said you, you could possibly move height measurement details to the land development code. Everybody said we don't want to do that. So that's fine. We don't want to, we're not going to address that. And council agreed to not address that as well. And the same thing with regulatory items. Council said they don't really have a preference to move any regulatory kinds of things from the comp plan to land development code. So as we move through the discussion with you, we're just saying up front, we're not going to address any height limitations and we're not going to address regulatory items, um, meaning we would not touch those, not touch those policies. So uh, again, I want to emphasize the whole purpose of what we're doing here is to develop a scope of work. We are not suggesting changes, optional amendments at this point. What we're just working on is if you wanted to make some changes, what would those be? what would the scope look like? So I'm going to pause here and address questions about timeline or process, <coughs> if you have them. Anybody have any questions about that? Well, I guess you Yeah, does, um, does density fall under land use? Some aspects of destiny are in land use and some are also in the housing element. Because there was a discussion on that at that city council meeting as to sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. <coughs> We're trying to increase density right. in, uh, in the old, old uh, Benita city area. Yeah, and, and the um, other oh, places I, were not. I'm sorry, I skipped a slide. Uh -oh. I didn't. I didn't I, have there was one slide other in slide here. that I had for you. It's not in our package. No. This slide here is the one that I had for you because that kind of addresses oh, yeah. um, that kind of addresses the density question a little bit, not directly, but in terms of process, what we 
wanted to talk to you about this morning is sort of those three <coughs> big priorities and if you had any other priorities that you thought were important that we look at and then any other feedback about what you want left off the table. And then in January, we'll have bring back to you the feedback from the public. We want to talk about any other items, big priorities. But February is where we would get into some data and analysis because uh, there is a question of density and what I'll be talking about in a little bit later is how can we rethink density in a way that maybe reallocates or sort of relooks at how you do um, um, implement density sort of regulations, so to speak, in the comp plan. So that would be the time where we have a planned analysis and sort of a comparison between on a map, what does your density look like now? And if there was sort of some different uh, reallocation, kind of what that would look like on a GIS map. So we would anticipate having a more detailed discussion uh, after we do that analysis in February. I don't know if that really addresses, but I, I think that was kind of how we were anticipating addressing that issue of density, because okay. they did, council did talk about Yeah, they talked that. about the good and the good and right. the bad of, of, of density, where it is, where, you know, where it isn't, where it should be. Right. So I'm, I'm interested in that. Well, that's something that'll be covered um, during the process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then March, then we would bring to you in March the, the, the scope we would anticipate and have you give feedback to council about that scope. So we're spending some time and going slow to really That's kind good. of do some thinking. Okay. Any other questions about that? I don't think so. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay, very good. So now I will make an attempt to be Shelley Johnson. <laughs> uh, so uh, in, the, in the EAR, uh, what, as you sort of remember, um, is that these are sort of the big three kind of priorities that, that council wanted to look at and that really did come through in the EAR discussions, both with you, council, the public feedback. I mean, there was a lot of consistency in terms of the vision and you know, overall, there was a strong, strong feedback that you wanted to protect the vision of, of Benita. And we used that small town, um, the small town charm and big bright future idea really as a way to sort of frame this discussion. So how these relate is important. Uh, when we look at land use, uh, sort of the little sort of details under these, each of these bubbles was, um, more or less the substance of our discussion that we had recommended that you look at supporting infill and redevelopment uh, and that in terms of that that you also look at old 41 and developing a strong vision for the old 41 area and we also heard a lot and made recommendations that you might want to consider and think about how aesthetics plays into your your future land use and um, kind of your vision. We did hear aesthetics a lot from the public as well. And then in terms of transportation, and you know, and we just ended up talking about it too with Bonita Beach Road, is that there's a real strong uh, vision for an interconnected system. There's a strong vision for uh, multimodal transportation and safe multimodal transportation. Uh, and sort of this desire to de-emphasize traffic and emphasize kind of the multimodal safety. So that doesn't mean that you would get rid of cars. That's pretty clear that we're not going to in the time frame of this vision anyway. What that means is to consider the options for uh, all other modes of traffic as well and really taking an approach that makes all of those modes safer, including vehicles. <clears throat> so, and then in terms of housing, how housing comes into this picture is there was a lot of feedback about protecting neighborhood quality and the quality of life. I mean, really quality of life is kind of the, the overarching vision here anyway, but quality of life has something to do with how you develop neighborhoods. And <clears throat> so then there was some feedback and quite a bit of feedback about 
uh, looking at how the city helps to um, kind of provide, not provide housing, but make a housing opportunities for people who are younger professionals or in the workforce. So how we do that is kind of ends up going to be up, up to you ultimately because the LPA, really, you're the ones who are uh, in, you're the boss of the comp plan. So uh, how we sort of look at housing is in neighborhoods is something that we want to talk about. Uh, and then sort of what's the what's the community balance? You know, how do you look at sort of density in some areas? Um, how do you protect neighborhoods while while thinking about density and different kind of re reconfigurations there? <clears throat> so that's kind of the big picture there. Um, and really this slide sort of talks about that challenge. <coughs> and the challenge is how do you preserve what you have? as well as making sure that there's balance and uh, a quality of life. So <clears throat> a lot of these issues here that we'll talk about are what's the difference with urban and suburban? Um, what's the difference between mixed use versus mixing uses? And I'll get into that a little bit. Uh, how do we think about density? How do we think about walkability? Um, how do we think I, about- I have a question on the- Yes. Was there a reason you left out bikeability? No particular reason other that we would sort of include that under transportation alternatives. There's a lot here. I mean, we're covering sort of big picture. Yeah, since there yes. was an emphasis on bikeability and yes. walkability on the other uh, slides we just saw, so. Right. Yeah, and all of these should be considered when we're thinking about transportation alternatives. Um, and then the last thing that we want to think about is how do we balance different housing types in the, in the communities as you move forward. So I've got a little bit more detail here. So form and function is one thing that you, uh, we should all start thinking about. And again, you don't have to give us feedback here today. We do have time in January where we will talk about this more. But in terms of form and function, really the city is technically urban as a city. On the other hand, Bonita Springs has a lot of suburban development and there's a desire to also protect those suburban options. So the recommendations are not proposing that you just become urban. Right? I think the preservation and preserving the, the good suburban neighborhoods that you do have is an important value that we want to protect and, and talk about as we move forward. So what does urban mean? Really from, a, from sort of the planner language, urban generally would mean a higher density areas. Uh, it generally means integrated vertically and horizontally. Um, it generally will mean a walkable block size, and it's generally gonna mean sort of a critical mass of activity. So how does that look f for Bonita? That might be something that you would think about in, for your downtown. So that would be more of a downtown kind of um, form, and it would function more like a downtown. And in that, you would have more or less mixed use. So mixed use, like we talked about, is possibly retail on the ground floor and then possibly residential on some floors above that. So when we think about urban, generally we might want to think about, for Bonita, your downtown. And then the question for you is, are there other areas where you would want more of an urban feel? Uh, and that would be a question that you could you could talk about but those are legal uh, <coughs> pardon me those are legal descriptions <coughs> that are easily defined sure okay <coughs> right so I, I think the in terms of any future land use or kind of how you see the city developing sort of these contrasts help to sort of think about think through <coughs> sort of any potential amendments and then suburban, generally what we mean by suburban is lower density. Uh, we would generally mean a separation of single family 
from multifamily, we would generally think of office and uh, possibly neighborhood retail um, and open space and buffers, we would generally think of those kinds of things in a suburban development. So buffers between um, different kinds of land uses, et cetera, vegetative buffers, those sorts of things. And generally, we also think of suburban as a less walkable block size. So the block size may be longer, um, and you may have less intersections in a suburban kind of form. And when we say mix of uses, what we also, what we mean there is that it's possible in some suburban developments, it's possible to do possibly a corner store or a small corner store or small retail in some areas. So when we say mix of uses, we don't mean ground floor. We mean there may be other uses that could be included in the suburban kind of form. Okay? Yep. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little bit about downtown and kind of some share some photos that we would think about and have you think about and it sort of brings together these three big priorities of housing transportation and land use so when you think about your downtown this is your your downtown overlay right now and if you can see some of the slides uh, in terms of housing the, and the mix of uses here I'm not sure where my pointer is on this uh, but the one picture sort of more or less has ground floor retail with residences on top. You also notice in some of these slides there's big wide sidewalks and those big wide sidewalks generally are so retail and <coughs> restaurants for example can haul some tables out during the day and, and have people uh, chatting, having coffee or dining on the, on the sidewalk. Uh, and <clears throat> generally in sort of an urban area too you would have uh, you see the picture where there, it's very walkable so the big wide sidewalks will do that um, and bikeable so you may have you've, we've got the slide there Carolyn of the, the bike and the, and the bus in the, same, in the same street so really when we think about an urban area we think about housing differently because there are options there for mixed use housing. Uh, we think about transportation as being more integrated and, and uh, more ability to walk and bike within a concentrated area. And then we also would think about land use being different in terms of accepting some more density. suburban development can look very different. So generally with suburban development, you're <coughs> going to be thinking about some different kinds of housing types, and those are, of course, single family residences. Some suburban areas will have some row housing, but generally if you look at sort of this kind of housing in the suburban areas, there's not ground floor retail in those photos on this suburban development. Um, and the <coughs> block size is different, and the pictures here, the, the graphics that you have, um, are kind of outline kind of the difference between more of a um, traditional development and suburban development street pattern. So when we think about kind of suburban development and how Benita wants to go forward, you might think about sort of the street pattern that's developed over time that's been suburban, and the connections that are made in, in that street pattern. So the picture to the right, the A and the B, um, in a lot of suburban areas, you have to travel pretty far distances to get to um, houses that may be close together. Uh, a tra traditional sort of street pattern in a traditional s suburban development, you might have more of a grid network and it provides more quick connections between, um, between destinations. The advantage of that, of course, is that you're reducing vehicles miles traveled, you're reducing the transportation onto major roads, and you're providing sort of more of a direct connection. So those are options as you move forward. There's areas, and that's kind of the next slide I have, is you have your future, and this is the last slide, you have your future land use map up here, but we also provide the vacant lands map 
So there's several different opportunities for vacant lands. And as you move forward, whichever sort of development you're looking for and whichever sort of density you're looking at, there's some options for how you do that. So is it possible, for example, to think about suburban neighborhoods with more integrated and, and uh, sort of connected blocks with all of the vacant lands that you have available? Um, how do we think about sort of prioritizing some areas for higher density? So those are all questions I think that, that we want to explore and that we want you to think about uh, what your preference might be. And again, I think it sort of talks to and, and speaks to these three big priorities. And how you vision the city will impact how, if there are any comp plan amendments, how those comp plan amendments uh, reflect that vision. <coughs> and the last <coughs> slide is really questions, and I'm happy to go back to any slide that I provided here. Um, There's a lot. Again, we're just getting started on the process. I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments. No, I, I just uh, have a request. Is it possible we could get um, a larger copy or larger copies of these maps? Absolutely, and they are also, is the, the, the two maps that I showed at the end? Yes, the ones here yes. that are over each other. Yeah, we can do that. So they, they are in the EAR document, but they're also small in the EAR document, so we will get large size at, at the very least eight and a half by 11s yeah. and possibly 11 by 17 maps. Yeah, eight, yeah yes. eight and a half by 11 for, for each of them. Yeah. I couldn't read the uh, legend. I could. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could read some of them, but not all of them. When uh, this blue area over here, I can guess what it is, but I still I couldn't sure. read it. Sure, that's no problem. Right. That's an easy request. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I was um, gonna say. Margaret, geez. thank you very much. Anybody have any more? We appreciate you coming down and appreciate your time. <coughs> you I have did a one good more job. request. All right. That request is for you to do some homework. Uh -oh. Okay. So your homework between, and, and you've got all of December to do it and all the rest of November. And that is to, to look through the recommendations that we provided in the EAR. Tell us if there's things in there that you don't want to address beyond what I've already said. And think about what your priorities would be, and it might be in other elements that you really think that, that should be addressed in some of the other elements. If you do not have a copy, Meg, and you might not have a copy of this, we will provide it. So uh, do, I will. Do we have a copy of that? Yeah, I've still got mine. I'll have another. That was, the, that was the original one, correct? Yeah, this, the what you know is the final is bound in this nicer yeah. white kind of binding. Does everybody have one of those? I don't. I know. So I do we, not have. I don't. So, I don't so, so we're going to probably ought to supply them to everybody. I don't need it because I've got one. Find it. We'll, can we'll we supply it. Can we call or call somebody here in the city if we don't yeah, have Yeah, we it? can just pick them up at the front desk. Huh? Sure. And I'll give me a little bit to have them printed because I want to make sure that they get printed and um, give me about a week and then we'll, ha we'll deliver them here and someone will let you know that okay, they're available. Yeah. Maybe other people. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> sure. Not all be done. Um, and so really I think the, I know that there's a lot of, a lot of detail here. And so um, again, if there's things that you just point out that you really don't want addressed, we're happy to take that off the table. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Margaret. Appreciate Thank it. Can we take a break before we start? Yeah, well, let's take a 10-minute uh, break. Thank you. Yeah. Five-minute break? Okay, sure. That's great. Uh, Audrey, real quick, are we having a meeting in, in uh, December? Or, I didn't. I thought you were. Okay. Oh, uh, wait. For LPA? I mean, she didn't put anything on her briefings, no, and it may have, be because um, it doesn't concern her. We but do have it be um, December 8th. Yeah, planned developments is going to go on, and um, yeah, I think there's some ordinances. There's a couple ordinances. Okay. I, I just need to know.